Hi there. Today, let's see how easy it is to create a responsive web page based on a Photoshop design. I just received a PSD from my designer for a web page using multiple artboards for different screen sizes. As a web developer, I want to use this PSD to help me create a responsive website in Dreamweaver. Feel free to download the exercise files for this tutorial and create a site in Dreamweaver to follow along. In Dreamweaver, select the Extract workspace if it's not already selected. You can also select Extract from the Window menu to open the Extract panel. Because there's no file open right now, the Extract panel is grayed out. Open index.html and let's finish designing this web page. Click Upload PSD and navigate to the folder with your Photoshop file and click Open. It may take a moment to upload to Creative Cloud. Once it uploads, click on the thumbnail to open the document. Alt-click on the title of the large desktop artboard to bring it into view. First, I want to add the text that I see in the PSD into my web design. Click the Layers button to view the PSD layers and navigate to the right spot. Click the large desktop layer and drill down through the architecture folder until you find the Urban Strokes layer. Choose Copy Text to copy it to your clipboard. Then, double-click the H2 element in Live View to paste it in. Voila! Next, we're going to get the CSS information for this text to make it display as beautifully as it looks in the comp. As you can see, there are certain text properties that don't change across screen sizes. Things like font family, color, and font weight are the same for all of the H2 headings in all screen sizes. So we'll copy these first and set them as global properties. In the Extract panel, uncheck Font Size so that the only properties selected are Font Family, Color, and Font Weight. Then click Copy CSS. Next, with the H2 element selected in Live View, expand the CSS Designer panel and select the H2 selector in the Prism Theme CSS file that shows a global media query. Right-click and select Go to Code, and right-click again to paste the code. Notice the new font styling across all of the H2 headings on the page. Now we want to take care of the CSS properties that do change across different screen sizes. In the case of this header text, the font size changes as the screen dimensions do. With the text for the large desktop still selected, uncheck everything except font size, then click Copy CSS. In Live View, right-click on the H2 Large class and select Go to Code in the heads-up display. Notice there are four classes named H2 large associated with this element. Mouse over each one to see a tooltip that provides information on which CSS file and media query the selector is in. Find and click the class name with a minimum width of 1200 pixels, since this matches the artboard we're working with. Make a new line in the CSS selector and paste the CSS from the clipboard. The next thing to do is repeat this process for the other two artboards. I'll show you another quick and easy way to get this font size information into the correct media query. Scroll to bring the desktop artboard into view and select the Urban Strokes text. In Live View, right-click the H2 Large class and choose Go to Code. Find and click the correct media query, which has a minimum width of 992 pixels. This matches the artboard that's currently selected. Place your cursor just after the curly bracket for the selector in the code view and press return or enter on your keyboard. Notice the contextual code hint window that pops up. Because the text is selected in the extract window, you can quickly and easily choose to set any of its CSS properties directly in code view. Double click the font size property to paste it in. Follow the same procedure for the final artboard copying and pasting the font size property into the H2 large class with a minimum width of 768 pixels. Next, we'll extract the hero image from the PSD and place it into our design. Use the Fit menu to fit all of the artboards back into view. Click on the hero image and then select the Extract Asset button. Browse to the Images folder in the Site Files to save the extracted image, and then change the format to JPEG. Optimization is set to 80%, which is just fine, so click Save to download the image. In Live View, we need to find the right place to insert the background image. Scroll up and find the large open area. The heads-up display indicates a figure element with the Architecture 1 class applied to it. 
right-click on the Architecture 1 class and select Go to Code in the heads-up display. Notice again that there are four classes named Architecture 1 associated with this element. The first one is the Global Class Selector, which is the correct place to add this image. Click the class and add a new line and set it as the background image. You can use the new Emmet support to make this quick and easy. Type B, G, I, and hit the Tab key. The code is generated, and all that's needed is a path to the image. If you remember, we saved the hero image in the Images subfolder, so place your cursor inside the parentheses and type a single quote, then images, forward slash, hero.jpg, and then another single quote. Expand Live View to see how it looks. Let's add one more bit of styling to set the background color for this first section. Click the Styles button in the Extract panel and scroll to see the colors used in this comp. Choose one of these or use the Color Picker to select the color directly from the PSD. Click the thumbnail for the newly sampled color and copy the hex value for it. Now, open the DOM panel and find the Section element with the Architecture ID selector. In Live View, right-click on the selector name and choose Go to Code. Then, find the first architecture selector with a pseudo class of Before and paste it there. Awesome! There are tons of useful features in the Extract panel that make it easy to build websites from Photoshop designs. Be sure to use Extract with Artboards to build responsive websites faster and easier with Photoshop and Dreamweaver.